Hi everyone, welcome back to Timeless Treasures. I'm Veronica and today I'm bringing you part two of the Explosion Box tutorial where I will be showing you how to decorate the box with decorative papers. So if you haven't watched part one yet, which is the making of the base of the box, go and watch that first. So by now your decorative papers should be printed out and you should have a rough idea what you want to put where. This takes some planning but it can also be tweaked during the process. Let's start by removing all the loose bits, the pockets, the fold outs, just put them aside. In this decorating process there will be a lot of cutting and gluing so I think take it step by step and let's just get cutting and gluing. Here are your measurements. Let's start by cutting all the squares. We're going to need 23 squares measuring 2 and 3 quarters by 2 and 3 quarters, 1 square measuring 3 by 3 and 8 squares measuring 2 and a half by 2 and a half inches. To keep track of what is what and what goes where, you might want to mark your pieces so that you don't get confused. We're going to start with the outside and to do this you just find the center of your flip pockets, fold them out, flip your whole piece over and then we can start. Now find the pieces that you assign to be on the sides of the box. And I like to ink the edges just to give it a nice finished look. So you can go ahead and ink all your edges or you can leave them as is. Keep in mind which way will be up when your box is folded. So when you lay down your pieces and plan your layout, get the orientation right. Now let's glue. You can use any glue for this. I would however not recommend a glue stick since it needs to be a stronghold glue because you don't want anything to come loose while you open and fold the box. Now carefully glue down your square with equal distance from the side of your square to the score lines and to the side of the base and wipe away any glue that seeped out. You can rotate your base and continue gluing the rest of the sides of the outside of the box. I'm kind of smooching the glue up to the edges with my finger just to be sure all the edges are properly glued. Here you can see I wasn't paying attention to the orientation. So remember if you're using directional prints, get the orientation right. Now give your box a quick fold up and experience the magic. Let's do the corners. Grab your eight squares measuring two and a half by two and a half inches. We're going to cut them diagonally so that we have 16 triangles, just like this. If you're inking, remember to ink these edges too. And this is how your triangles will look on your base. So let's go ahead and cut the rest of the triangles. As before, I first plan my layout. I put down the pieces where I want to glue them and I move them around until I'm happy. Then I glue them down with the same glue that I use for the other pieces. Try to aim for the center of the triangle, meaning in between the score lines and the side of the base when you put down your triangle. Since the outside corners of the box will only be visible while you're opening the box, there's no need to pay too much attention to the direction of the print on your triangle pieces. It's a good idea after every step just to fold up the box and make sure that everything folds perfectly before you continue. Here you can see how and when your outside corners will be visible. Now we can start with the inside. So grab your fold outs and pockets that we put aside earlier and also two of the decorative paper squares measuring two and three quarters by two and three quarters. Let's start with the front loading pockets. You will take your pocket piece and glue it onto the decorative paper square and then this whole piece will be glued down into the base. So just glue on the flaps, put your square in the pocket and glue the flaps to the back of the decorative paper. Now make the front loading pocket for the other side too and then the front loading pockets that goes onto the center flip 
pockets will be made in the exact same way. For extra strength and durability, I like to combine double-sided tape and wet glue for this step. So just apply your double-sided tape to the back of this pocket piece and your wet glue and then carefully glue it down onto the square of the base. You can use whatever strong glue you have available for this. Remember to wipe off any of the glue that seeped out. And once again we're folding to make sure everything fits perfectly. For the fold outs I'm using the same combination of double sided tape and wet glue. So just remove your tape backing, put your wet glue on and carefully position your fold out where you want to glue it. And just press it down really well. Now before gluing down your accordion fold, make sure the first flap folds out away from you. Now for the inside corners. Here you can see me planning my layout, laying down the pieces, shuffling them around until I'm 100% happy. I'm using the same strong wet glue that I used on the outside corner pieces and also the squares. This is the point where I start getting excited because it's looking like something, it's coming together so nicely. Next, we'll be gluing on the fronts of the foldouts. So grab two more of your decorative paper squares measuring two and three quarters by two and three quarters. Go ahead and open up your foldouts. Because I want my box to have direction, I will consider this part where the square foldout is as the bottom and the accordion fold will be at the top. This is important to remember when you consider the direction of the print. It might happen that there's a slight overhang of this piece. If that does happen, just trim it off with your scissors. This is because of the way that we were trimming the edges when we were making the foldout to make sure it folds properly. So you can just fix this, trim it off, ink it up if you need to. It's perfectly fine. Now you can tie your bow to close the foldout and we can move on to the accordion foldout. Remember this is the top of the box and we've just turned it upside down. So check the direction of your print. Now you can tie your bow to close your accordion fold out. And we can move on to the top and side loading pockets. So grab 11 squares measuring 2 and 3 quarter by 2 and 3 quarter inches. We're also going to make another 3 front loading pockets exactly the same as we did on the side. So try to find 3 less busy pieces for this. Something like this will work well. And the reason for this is simply to get a better contrast, like this. You can also grab some of your offcuts from earlier as we'll be using them for the small piece on the cover of the pocket. From these decorative paper scraps, you need to cut five rectangles measuring one and a quarter by two and five eighths. And keep in mind the direction of your print. Now to cut the notches in the decorative piece, you can simply place it onto the pocket exactly where you want to glue it and carefully trace with a pencil and cut out the notch. If you've used a circle punch, do exactly the same, but place the punch on the trace line. This is what it should look like. Here's a quick recap on how to assemble this piece. Place your decorative square into the pocket, fold down the flaps, glue it and then glue on the front. Just like this. Just remember to ink all your edges before you start gluing. I'll show you one and then fast play the rest. So just put your decorative square into the pocket, turn it over, Get your glue onto the flaps and press it down. Continue making the rest of the pockets. And put them under a book or any other heavy object just to keep them flat. Now you can glue on your decorative pieces. So 
they will go on to every second of the center flaps but first let's glue on the decorative pieces for these two now we need to glue the front loading pockets onto the top and side loading pockets we'll be gluing on every second pocket starting with the second pocket You need to use a relatively strong glue for this as well because you don't want those pockets to come off. I'm using double sided tape and wet glue. And just make sure that you put your glue all the way to the edges. I just put this piece of white paper behind the black pocket so that I can see the edges and position it perfectly in the center of the pocket. Then just press down to make sure it is glued well. Now go ahead and glue on the other two pockets and remember glue one, skip one. Now onto the front and side loading pockets. I like to spread out my pieces like this so that I can see what I want to put where. This just helps me in my planning process. Let's first glue all the fronts of the pockets. Then turn your box around and then we can glue the back of the pockets. Now let's just take a quick moment to marvel at our creation so far. Next step, let's do the photo mats. So photo mats are basically placeholders for where you will be putting your photos, but you can also write on them. We will put them on all the inserts and also on the fold outs. You can use a plain lightweight paper for the photo mats. You will be cutting 10 squares measuring two and a quarter by two and a quarter inches and 28 rectangles measuring two and a half by two and a quarter. We are going to glue down the square in the center of the black square. Remember to use a white piece of paper as a background so that you can easily see the edges of the black and this way it's easier to see exactly where the center is. I'm just using a regular glue stick for this. Just make sure you put enough glue on. Don't forget about the back of the accordion fold out. When you're done, you can close the fold out by tying the ribbon and then move on to the square fold out. Be sure to put a photo mat on every blank space that's still available. Now we need to make the front loading pocket inserts. We will need to make two for the sides and three for the ones on the center pockets. So grab your five insert pieces measuring two and a half by two and a half inches and also your ten photo mat squares measuring two and a quarter by two and a quarter before we glue down the photo mats we need to make some sort of pull tab to easily remove these inserts from the pocket i just use some decorative paper off cuts for this we're going to cut five rectangles measuring one by one and a half inches and since these pieces are so small you don't have to worry about the direction of your print now grab your corner punches or your scissors as we're going to shape these tabs now. So just fold it in half lengthwise and then punch out the corners on the folded edge. I tried two different punches here to see which one I like best and I decided to use this one. You can just do this with your scissors if you don't have a punch. Here you can see the difference between the corner rounder punch and the notch punch. So I chose the notch punch. This is how we will glue them onto the inserts. The way I get them aligned is I put them into the pocket and I make sure that the top edge of the tab is aligned with the decorative paper on the box. Now go ahead and fold and clip the corners of all your tabs and remember to ink your edges. When you're done making your tabs, you can start gluing your photo mats onto the front and back of all the front pocket inserts. Now let's glue on the tabs. You need to use a stronger glue for this, so I'm using a strong wet glue. And be sure to get your glue right up to the edges. Now carefully position your tab 
at the top end of the insert perfectly in the center and fold it back to glue it to the front and the back of the insert. Now put it into the pocket and make sure that the top edge of the tab aligns with the top edge of the decorative page like this. If it sticks over just a little bit don't worry as long as it does not stick over the side of the box. Now make the rest of your inserts and this is what they look like. You can now put the inserts in their pockets and we can start with the top and side loading inserts. Let's start by getting all the inserts out of their pockets. Now grab your 28 rectangular photo mats measuring two and a half by two and a quarter inches. We'll be gluing down four photo mats per insert that will be on the front, the back and on the inside. I finished gluing all my photo mats off camera. Now I'm just putting the inserts back into their pockets so I can continue with the side loading inserts. Follow the same process for the side loading inserts as you did with the top loading inserts. So you'll be gluing four photo mats on each insert. And here are my side loading inserts all done. As you can see it's a bit difficult to get the inserts out of their pockets so we need to add some sort of pulling mechanism. So what I'm using is some thin crochet yarn and some tiny beads. We're going to sew this yarn into the fold of the insert. So go ahead and poke three holes with your needle, one in the middle and two to the sides, exactly on the fold. Then cut a piece of yarn about three times the length of your insert and thread your needle. You can now thread your beads onto the yarn. You can also do this later, but I find it helps to stop the thread from pulling straight through the hole. And then just make a knot to keep the beads from popping off. You might need to make a couple of knots depending on the size of the hole in your beads. Now to sew it in, start from the middle hole from the outside. Pull your yarn through, then go back from the inside on one of the side holes and back again from the outside, back in through the last hole. And lastly, you're going through the center hole again, back to the outside. Make sure that your two pieces of yarn coming out through the middle hole are on both sides of the piece of yarn going down. Then just tie a double or triple knot to secure it. And then you can just thread some beads onto the other piece of yarn. Now trim your yarn off to knotting and this is what it looks like. to sew in the rest of them. I don't like all my beads hanging in the exact same spot so what I did with the next one was to start not from the center hole but from one of the side holes. Going in from the outside, coming back through the middle from the inside going out and then back again from outside going in on the furthest hole and back again through the middle hole going outside and then just tying together the ends. Then go ahead and thread your beads. Here you can see what they look like with all the beads threaded. Now let's get them back in the pockets. So for the first insert, the beads are hanging from the middle for the second insert, they're hanging from the right side. For the third, they're hanging from the middle again. And for the last one, they're hanging on the left. Now let's make some pull tabs for the side loading inserts. You can once again use off cuts from your decorative papers. We need to cut six rectangles measuring four and a quarter by half an inch. 
and then we'll be gluing them back to back to make three pull tabs. To attach the pull tab to the insert, fold open your insert and carefully cut a slit just wide enough for the pull tab to go into. Now just check that it slides in easily. If not, make adjustments by cutting the slit a little bit further. This one is perfect. So now we can glue the two pieces back to back. Once they're glued together, you can go ahead and ink your edges and round your corners. To glue them in, slide your tab into the slit that you cut in the insert. Then position the inside edge of the tab just a quarter inch past the fold line and put some strong glue on the one side of the tab. Then carefully press down in position. Now you can just fold and train the tab to stay folded. Continue making the rest of the insert pull out tabs and put all the inserts back in their pockets. And here's a close up of how the pull out tab works. Now it's time for the final step, the box lid. We're going to cut four rectangles measuring three by three quarters of an inch. This will be for the sides of the lid. For the top, you can glue down the three by three inch square which we cut earlier and then glue down the last remaining square measuring two and three quarters by two and three quarters to the inside of the lid. And don't forget to ink your edges. We are going to glue the rectangles onto the side of the lid perfectly in the center with equal amounts of black around the printed piece. Remember to pay attention to your orientation if you have directional print. You will need to use a strong glue again for this as it's on the outside. Carefully position your piece in the exact center of the side panel and press it down. Be sure to clean off any glue that might have seeped out. Now for the next part you want to be sure that it is centered exactly in the center of the side panel but also it needs to align with the previous one. So just turn your lid to make sure everything aligns. Now go ahead and glue down the other two pieces. And there's your lid. Just in case you run into the same problems that I did, I want to show you how to fix it. So I noticed my box lid was opening up on some of the seams where it was folded. So just check all your corners and just slightly open it up and put some glue in there. Then just make sure you clean it up carefully. Now I wanted to make sure that they don't open up on me again so I added some clips and I just left it for a while. And that's it, you're done. Now you can just have fun. Add all your photos or your notes or whatever you want onto the photo mats and make this box special. I hope you enjoyed this two-part tutorial on the making of an explosion box. Please give my video a like and remember if you want to see more of my work, subscribe to my channel. See you next time.